All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Talking Blue. I'm Matthew. He's Luke. So, hope you guys enjoyed the last episode. We are back today. Um, we're going to be talking about um the draft, like with the Giants and like what like and the biggest know. position needs. And then also some uh, free agency updates. You know, we have some updates for uh, signings, coaching jobs. Right, we also just wanted to take a part and say thank you for the support. You know, we hit two thousand views on two of our draft videos. We love the early support. We'll keep it going with the videos. You guys keep on responding that way. Matthew, um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Isaiah Hodgins and got, and Lawrence Cager. Tight end receiver, both guys that played about midseason, and they did make an impact. I want you to talk a little bit in depth about what impact they had on the Giants and what impact we could see them having forward in the next few seasons. Well, um, Lawrence Cager, there's not as much to say. I think he's like a solid like backup tight end. Um, start most preseason games next season for the Giants. Um Isaiah Hodgins, he was claimed off of waivers, like, like in the middle of the season, and, like, he wasn't doing great with Buffalo, and he just, like, popped off with the Giants. Yeah. It was unbelievable. You know, you got to talk about, you know, the Giants didn't have a star receiver, but, you know, it was a collective group of guys that just, they produced. Isaiah Hodgins, he, he, was, he seemed like he was going to touchdown every game, and a guy that was, wasn't even, was on the practice squad was catching a touchdown in a playoff game. Made some crazy plays in that Minnesota Vikings game, yeah. um, and it's just great to see him back. And he'll, we'll, he'll we'll see him back in the New York uniform. I guess a little bit want to talk about uh, Kafka and Wink Martindale, who a little about them. Talk about their impact on the season and how we look forward to seeing them after they did not get the job with Indianapolis and Arizona or Houston. They all had interest in. Well, um, I'm glad they're both staying. Like I feel bad like wishing them like not to get the coaching job but like i'm glad they're still our offensive coordinators and um you know i don't know like it would be very hard for someone to want like the head coaching job in arizona and gm because like with like the whole situation with kyler murray like they they gave him a ridiculous contract and um he's not like performing that well yeah like you got to be careful who you give a good contract that much money to, like unless they're like Patrick Mahomes or like one of the so, best players. In the league. Talking about money, I know we were just talking about Kafka. I think we want to talk a little about money. Daniel Jones' agent's been requesting about thirty-five million dollars a year. Saquon Barkley set to receive about fourteen million. Talk about that, Matthew. I think both of those are pretty good contracts. Um, I know. Um, Saquon said he wanted Christian McCaffrey money, which is not bad at all. I'm fine with the Giants giving him that much money. It's just that, like, I still want to have, like, more money to, like, spend in, like, free agency and, like, yeah, the rest in the draft. You know, you look at Daniel Jones wanting $35 million. Daniel Jones is my quarterback. I say he's a top-10 quarterback. I've stuck by Absolutely. him for the last few years. Matthew, you have too. But it's tough to say, is he worth $35 million? And you don't really have a choice in this situation. It's just, you know, it's $35 million. Right, it's a lot of money though, and like yeah. you get sometimes you got to be careful about who you give like a lot of money to, which I just said. I think he's worth it. I remember like a few weeks ago on Twitter, I saw a Giants fan saying that like we should get like get um T Higgins give him ninety two million dollars a year. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I don't think he's worth that much money because yeah. like I'm never gonna like, want someone to like on the Giants or like whatever team I like to get that much money because like. With Kenny Galladay, the Giants gave him a $72 million contract. I was excited when the Giants signed him at the time, but I yeah, thought it was so. a ridiculous deal. And then you look at a guy like Isaiah Hodgins, they signed for a minimal contract, and he's played, he put up way more production than Kenny Galladay. So it just shows you, you know, once you give him the money, it's, not, it's risky because if they don't produce like Kenny Galladay, you take a huge cap hit, which the Giants hit last year. So I guess I want to go back to Wink and Kafka. You know, they definitely developed Daniel Jones this season, and we saw that. So that's why Daniel Jones is getting offered all this money, asking for all this money. Talk a little bit about how it's good they're staying and like what impact they had on the Giants football team this season. Um, well, Kafka, I didn't expect to be like as good as he was, but um, you know, I think he's really helped the offense out this season and um, kind of how like helped develop Daniel Jones. Like he was uh, the chief quarterback coach and an assistant offensive coordinator, and um, yeah, I was like, he's gonna help Daniel Jones out a lot. Martindale um was huge because like he's helped the Giants defense out and like I can remember um with um when he was the Ravens defensive coordinator like they had like a lot they were like very high in the league with like pressures sacks and like a lot of things and that's really helped the Giants defense a lot yeah. a lot and before the season I thought the Giants would have like a top ten defense possibly top five 
Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the draft. You know, obviously the draft is coming out. Um, it's coming soon. You know, all the mock drafts are coming out. We're planning later in the week to make a, a mock draft uh, video. Um, today we're just focused on introducing some of the Giants' prospects. So I want to start off talking about a few receivers. Now, the Giants' number one need – I don't think it's really debatable. First round, I go receiver. Uh, what about you? What's your opinion on that, Matthew? It depends on like what happens in the off season for me to like fully decide. Um, like let's say um the Giants got um either like one of the three receivers, one of the receivers I'm about to name, DJ Moore, Deontay Johnson, Brandon Ayuk, or um T Higgins. Like if we get one of them, I'm not taking receiver first round, probably second round, definitely. But yeah. it's definitely the biggest need for the Giants. So I want to talk a little bit about a few receiver prospects. Uh, most In most Giants mock drafts, not really any other prospect except receivers really open that shows what the Giants are going to pick, but you really never know in the draft. So I want to talk about a few. Uh, Jalen Hyatt, Tennessee, six, he's about he's about six feet tall. But, you know, you saw what he did last year. I'm an Alabama fan, five touchdowns. You want to talk a little about Jalen Hyatt, Matthew? Yeah, he's great. Um, I think – He'll possibly be like a very late first round pick or like mid second round pick. Um, I think if he yeah. drops to the second round, the Giants like still keep their pick. I think the Giants definitely draft him. Yeah, and I I think you know the thing is it depends receiver. You know, you look at the Giants receiver core is. Do you want a bigger receiver or do you want to go smaller? Because you look at the options the Giants have. Jalen Hyatt, Zay Flowers, Jordan Addison, they're all undersized, all under six feet. Not that not, that doesn't mean they can't produce, but if you're looking for a bigger receiver, then those those main guys aren't your thing. I, I think talking about the Giants' needs is I think they do need a big receiver. You know, you look at Kenny Gallant, he can work out. And Isaiah Hodgins, yeah, you have him, but it'd be nice to have a nice 50-50 ball receiver. And that's what I want to lead to talking about Quinn and Johnston, TCU. Yeah, now, he may be going top fifteen, but talk a little bit about his talent, Matthew. I think he's the best receiver in the draft. Arguably, one of the best players. Um, if a lot of people are going to hate me for this, but I think he's going to be the first overall pick for the um Bears. That's honestly the biggest need. I know, like a lot of people have been taking Will Anderson or Jalen Carter in the draft, but honestly, receiver is more important. I think I know, like the Bears need pass rushers, but like they have the most cap space in the NFL. They'll worry about that. They'll get that done the off season, but um, I think. First round, I think they'll get um, yeah, their wide receiver I, one. I have Quinton Johnston in my in my book. He's going top 15, but definitely a mention, I would say. You know, the possible trade-up. Anything can happen in drafts. draft. He's right. the number one prospect, really, at receiver. And it just his size and speed is crazy. I want to talk about one more guy. And, you know, I've seen him in a few mock drafts for the Giants, and it's a, it's a tough call. Jackson Smith-Najibba. He oh, he's good. All, he was out all last season. And he did. He had a great 21, 2021 season, but he was out. And, you know, the risk of injury is big. You're taking a guy with your first-round pick. You know, there's a risk for injury. He didn't really produce another smaller receiver. What's your opinion on him, Matthew? He's good. He's um, probably a top-five receiver in the draft. Um, I don't think he'll be a late first-round pick. I think in my mock draft, I have him being a Texan like the se- in, like, the, the second first-round pick. But if the Giants got him, I'd be thrilled. I like Jackson Smith and the Jagba. I like watching him. Um, yeah. I remember watching him. I remember watching like the um, watching Ohio State versus Georgia. That was a really good game. Did he even play yeah. then? I forget. No, he was. He only had five catches for forty three yards this game this season. He was just he was hurt. And you know, speaking about receivers, you look at the Giants receiver core. I want to talk a little bit about it. You have Wanda Robinson. He's five seven. Great slot. He had a very promising season when he tore his ACL. Then you, and then everything else is up in air. Besides Isaiah Hodgins and him, we don't know who's coming back. We don't know if Kenny Galladay's coming back. We don't know if Slayton's coming back. We don't know if Richie James is coming back. All those guys are up in the air. So another really talented receiver, undersized again, Zay Flowers, 5'10", Boston College. But he, he just crazy, 50-50 ball speed. Talk a little about him, Matthew. I think he's um also like a top ten receiver in the draft. Um, but I don't know. I think the Giants could possibly draft him. He's someone I'd consider. Um, I think Jordan Addison's better. I mean, like I've watched him play since I'm an Oregon fan, but yeah. we'll see. And I guess let's talk about some other position needs. Um, linebacker has to be number one. Yeah, that's linebacker. arguably the biggest need. Giants big need 
than a linebacker. You know, I've seen a few mock drafts, and he looked, he's looked good. Treading Simpson, Clemson, linebacker. Yes. An option. He's an option. And you always have a guy, I know one of Matthew's favorite, Noah Swell. Yeah. You, know, you, you, you have guys like that that you could get in the second, third, fourth, fifth round that find themselves starting. Tay Crowder is a great example. He's picked, he's Mr. Irrelevant, last pick in the seventh round. And he started for two years with the Giants. So, yeah. you know, you could get him in a linebacker at any point. And there's a, there's a lot of talent in this draft class. I think it's an underrated draft class. And I think, you know, first the Giants have to execute free agency. So, you know, you've seen all these rumors, DeAndre Hopkins, all that. Yeah, I don't see the Giants bring them in. but Definitely not going to happen. About that. Talk a little about some of these free agency rumors, trade rumors you've been hearing. Um, so... Free agency, I don't see, like, there aren't that many big names that, like, stick out to me for, like, wide receiver. Like, the biggest names that stick out to me, I would say, are um, Alan Lazard, um, Jacoby Myers, Juju Smith-Schuster. I'm, yeah. I'm fine with the Giants signing one of them, but, like, I kind of want, like, more of a high-end receiver. Like, I'd rather, that's like, why, a DJ Moore or a Brandon Ayuk. That's why you also have the prospect of the – you could draft one. You know, you draft one, you develop them, and, you know, that, that could be your next thing. You know, the Giants – they they've drafted some good receivers. Now it hasn't worked out. You know, you look at OBJ, they drafted him. You look at Kadarius Tony, they drafted him. Now it hasn't exactly worked out, but it was more off the field issues. I think the Giants seen a clean cut receiver, and you know they had issues with OBJ. They had issues with Kadarius Tony. DeAndre Hopkins have, have had a lot of off field issues. So taking a guy like that to me just doesn't seem like the right idea. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't trade for DeAndre Hopkins. Um, honestly, like, I know a lot of people think he's just worth a second round pick. Honestly, I think he's worth a first at the yeah. very least. But um, also, like, we'd have to spend a lot of money, which I would not be willing to spend for the Giants. Yeah. Um. So, I think, Matthew, I think that's that pretty much covers it for our draft and free agency kind of opener. You know, we're looking to continue this series. I'm hoping by uh, in a few days we're going to put out another one with uh, another – draft one and get a little more in depth about some of those prospects we were talking about today um any closing statement statements matthew but yeah um obviously wide receiver middle linebacker also i think corners are like another big need that should yeah. be addressed for the giants um well, like whether we get it done in free agency or not um also inner offensive line would be good like yeah interior offensive line possibly and, yeah you're right um who was you going to say? You Possibly say? draft Osiris Torrance, like the uh, offensive guard from Florida. Yeah. So the Giants, obviously, they have a lot of options. And uh, next week, we're going to go in depth about some of those guys. And hope, and we'll see if they'll get drafted. And, you know, we're hoping to continue this draft series. Um, I think that's it from me and Matthew. Yep. So uh, go Big Blue. This is Talking Blue, Matthew and Luke. And uh, we'll post another one in a few days. We love the support. Thank you for it. All right. See you later. Bye.